Scripture, Ethics, and the Possibility of Same-Sex Relationships. Written by Karen R. Keene. Narrated by Tanya Eby. In the following pages, I take you on the journey I have traveled in the search for truth. In Chapter 1, I show you the history of the Church's response to the gay and lesbian community. Our theological views are affected not only by what we read in the Bible, but also by the interactions we have with people. In the past, many Christians believed false stereotypes that badly mischaracterized gay people. These ghost stories are finally being put to rest as more gay and lesbian people find the courage to share their lives with Christian friends and family. As our knowledge of human sexuality and sexual orientation increases, I suspect we will continue to grow in our pastoral responses. In Chapter 2, I take you back in time to the land of Israel. What did the biblical authors believe about same-sex relationships and why? To understand what the Bible says, we will explore the inspired author's intended meaning. From there, in Chapter 3, I present the most compelling arguments in the debate from both the traditionalist and the progressive points of view. In Chapter 4, I shift gears from clarifying the foundational issues presented in the first three chapters to laying out my own arguments. This chapter addresses common confusion when it comes to interpreting the Bible. Specifically, how do we make sense of Old Testament laws? And when do we apply them to our own lives? Is the Levitical law against male-male sexual intercourse still binding? Chapters 5 and 6 are where the rubber meets the road. In Chapter 5, I discuss the question of how we determine God's will from the Bible. In what ways does the Bible inform our ethical practice? To explore this, I turn to the biblical authors themselves to see how they interpret scriptural texts for ethics. In Chapter 6, I invite you to consider the implications of mandatory lifelong celibacy for gay and lesbian people. Is lifelong celibacy possible for everyone who attempts it? In Chapter 7, I consider the effects of the fall in light of scientific evidence. Is same-sex attraction a symptom of evil desire, a medical condition, or simply representative of human variation in sexual development. Finally, in Chapter 8, I discuss suggestions for moving forward. How might the Church reimagine its response to the gay and lesbian community? My hope is that these chapters will be life-giving. I want to take the conversation beyond its current stalemate to help Christians contemplate new ways of thinking about this controversial topic I also desire to equip pastors, counselors, and other church leaders who are looking for biblically sound guidance on same-sex relationships. Last but not least, I hope this book will encourage the hearts of gay and lesbian people who often feel painfully torn between faith and sexuality.